Hello, grade 11. In this lesson, we discuss simple covalent bonds. Let's join Diyasha as she reminds us what this means. We are going to focus on what happens when non-metal elements react together. Remember that non-metals are always looking for electrons, so sometimes non-metals will share electrons in an effort to fill their outer energy levels. To make this clear, let's look at a very simple example by starting with the first element of the periodic table, hydrogen. Here is the energy level diagram of a hydrogen atom. We will use this diagram to see how a covalent bond forms. Do you see that the hydrogen atom has only one electron in its outer level? If we look at the energy level diagram, you can clearly see that the 1s orbital is only half filled. To become stable, the hydrogen atom needs to have two electrons in its outer energy level. Therefore, the hydrogen atom will want to pick up a second electron. Remember that electrons are negatively charged and that they will repel each other when they come close. However, if they collide with enough energy, the orbitals will overlap and the two electrons will be shared. They are able to share an orbital if they spin in opposite directions, as indicated by the opposite directions of the arrows indicating electron spin. So, when these two 1s orbitals move closer together, they will overlap to share a 1s orbital. Can you see that we now have a fold orbital? This new compound is the hydrogen molecule. We write the chemical formula for this molecule as H2. Hydrogen gas is always found in this form. The element is never found as single atoms, but always in pairs of hydrogen atoms. We call this a diatomic molecule. The prefix di means two. I think that you will agree that it is rather complicated to draw energy level diagrams each time you want to show how atoms combine. Well, Gilbert Lewis, who contributed to the valence bond theory, had another idea for representing the bonding process. He used dots and crosses to represent the valence electrons. Lewis dot structures are a shorthand form to represent the valence electrons of an atom. The structures are written as the element symbol surrounded by dots and crosses that represent the valence electrons. Lewis structures can also be used to show bonding between atoms. The bonding electrons are placed between the atoms and are represented by a pair of dots. The Lewis structure for the hydrogen molecule will look like this. Yet another scientist by the name of Cooper made it even easier. He came up with the idea of using one small stripe for each shared pair of electrons in a molecule. In this instance, we had only one shared pair between the hydrogen atoms, so only one stripe is needed. This bond is known as a single covalent bond. Notice that Diyasha has used quite a few models to represent hydrogen molecules on the microscopic level. Remember these models are just representations of hydrogen molecules. We can't actually see the tiny hydrogen molecule. So we don't know exactly what it looks like on the microscopic level. That's why we use models to help us visualize what atoms and molecules might be like. On the macroscopic level, hydrogen is a colorless gas which we might store in gas cylinders like these. Let's join Diyasha again. Let's look at another example of covalent bonding. 
do you see that each chlorine atom has only seven valence electrons, but actually it wants eight? When each chlorine atom shares its unpaired electron, both atoms are tricked into thinking each has a full valence of eight electrons. Let's have a closer look at what happened. We can clearly see that the third 3p orbital is only half filled. The two chlorine atoms now move closer until the electrons in each one's third 3p orbital overlap to form a filled orbital. Remember that these two electrons must spin in opposite directions. This new compound is the chlorine molecule. Can you write down the formula for this molecule? Remember that this molecule formed by two of the same kind of atoms is called a diatomic molecule. We write the chemical formula for chlorine as Cl2. Let's see what the Lewis structure looks like for this bond. The valence electrons for each chlorine atom is shown by using a dot. Look at the two circles. Do you see that the two outer energy levels are filled up because the half-filled orbitals have overlapped? Since the atoms are sharing only one electron, we call it a single covalent bond. Let's draw the Cooper structure for the chlorine atom as well. In this instance, we had only one orbital from each overlapping, so only one stripe is needed. Again, the single stripe shows that this is a single bond. Now, I want you to notice that both hydrogen and chlorine have a valency of 1. Other nonmetal elements in group 7 also have a valency of 1 and will also bond in the same way. Can you predict the chemical formulae of fluorine, bromine and iodine? Well, the gas fluorine will have a chemical formula F2. The liquid bromine will have a chemical formula Br2 and the chemical formula for iodine is I2. Each of these elements forms diatomic molecules with a single covalent bond, but not all covalent bonding is between two identical atoms. We can have more than two atoms forming a bond, and they don't have to be atoms of the same element. Let's have a look at an example. Hydrogen fluoride is a gas that is extremely corrosive and acidic. It is very irritating to the skin and eyes. This compound has many industrial applications like glass etching and in the manufacturing of plastics. Can you predict what will happen if hydrogen and fluorine gas react together? Hydrogen has one unpaired electron and fluorine has one unpaired electron. So when they combine, they share this pair of electrons to form a molecule. Notice there is only one hydrogen atom and one chlorine atom in the molecule. So we write the chemical formula as HF. Let's do one more example. What about water? Well, water is a compound made from oxygen and hydrogen. Let's look at the Lewis diagram of these elements. Notice, oxygen has two unpaired electrons. It has a valency of two. Hydrogen has one unpaired electron. It has a valency of one. When hydrogen and oxygen combine, we need two hydrogen atoms to each form a single covalent bond. So the Lewis structure of the water molecule tells us that the chemical formula for water is H2O. Thanks, Diasha. Let's draw Lewis diagrams for three more simple molecules. Draw Lewis diagrams for ammonia, NH3, oxygen difluoride, OF2, and hypochlorous acid, HOCl. The formula of ammonia is NH3. Nitrogen is in group 5, so we know it has 5 valence electrons and it has a valency of 3. It has 3 gaps which need to be filled for a noble gas electron structure. These 3 gaps allow 3 hydrogen atoms to bond with nitrogen to form ammonia. Each hydrogen atom's unpaired electron pairs with one of nitrogen's unpaired electrons. To form an ammonia molecule, the formula of oxygen difluoride is OF2. Oxygen is in group 6. It has 6 valence electrons. Oxygen has a valency of 2. It has 2 gaps which need to be filled for a noble gas electron structure. 
Fluorine is in group 7. It has 7 valence electrons and a valency of 1. It has one gap to be filled for a noble gas electron structure. Two fluorine atoms unpaired electrons pair with each of an oxygen atom's unpaired electrons to form an oxygen difluoride molecule. The formula of hypochlorous acid is HOCl. Chlorine is in group 7. A chlorine atom has seven valence electrons and a valency of one. The chlorine atom's unpaired electron pairs with one of oxygen's unpaired electrons. And the hydrogen atom's unpaired electron pairs with oxygen's other unpaired electron to form a molecule of hypochlorous acid. In this lesson, we have looked at simple covalent bonds. Each of these bonds was between two atoms which shared one set of unpaired electrons together. In another lesson, we look at molecules with multiple bonds and molecules with coordinate bonds. Also check out the task video and look at the Mindset website at www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.